Many Christians get the parable of the minas and the talents completely wrong. They think the minas and the talents represent physical things like money, gifts, abilities, or other material blessings. And they don't truly have understanding of what they really represent, which is very ironic because as I'm gonna show you, the minas and the talents represent understanding of the word of God. So let me first go through why the minas and the talents don't represent what many Christians commonly think. And then I'm gonna make a case for why they represent the understanding of God's word. So here's the parable of the talents in Matthew 25. There's also a similar story about the minas in Luke 19. Now I'm not gonna sit here and read this to you, but you can pause it and go over it if you want to. But the gist of it is, is that a master had three servants and he gave them each either talents or minas and expected them to engage in business while he was gone and expected to earn a return on their talents or minas. And when he came back, he called them to account and asked them what they'd done with what he had given them. And two of them earned a return and the wicked and lazy servant hid it and buried it and didn't do anything with it and he was thrown into outer darkness. Now, the first thing that many people will say that the talents and minas represent is money. They'll say that, well, it's, it's the money that God has blessed you with and you're to use your financial resources to further the kingdom. But what we need to do to see if this is true is we need to plug this in and see if this fits the rest of the parable and see if this meshes and jives with the rest of the parable. So let's just take this verse in Luke 19. And let's just plug in, you know, I know that dollars weren't available back then, but let's just, you know, for the sake of, of our culture, let's just put dollars in here and see if this fits. The first came before him saying, Lord, your dollar has made $10 more. And he said to him, well done, good servant. Now, does this make sense that God would be pleased with him for taking a dollar and making more money with that? I mean, is this... I mean, yes, this is commendable, but is this something that God is really interested in in you, you know, you making more money for the sake of making more money? No, this, this is, does not make sense, especially in light of the other things that Jesus says, uh, you know, about forsaking everything that you have and not holding up money as an idol. Okay, so this, this does not seem to fit. This does not seem to fit the narrative that, you know, God is just asking you to take your money and make more money. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so money is not the meaning or representation of the talents and minas. So then other people will say, well, it just means your gifts and abilities, you know? Like if you're a musician, then you're to be the best musician that you can, or if you're a teacher, or you know, whatever other gifts and abilities you have, you're to use these to further the kingdom of God. And yes, we are to use our money. And yes, we are to use our gifts and abilities to further the kingdom of God. Absolutely. But again, is this what this parable is saying? Well, again, let's plug this in and see if this fits. Now, this isn't going to be, you know, completely grammatically correct. So you got to bear with me. But I think you get the gist of it. But let's go ahead and read it. The first came before him saying, Lord, your gifts and abilities have made 10 more gifts and abilities. And he said to him, well done, good servant. Again, this doesn't make sense that God would be wanting us to take our gifts and abilities and multiply them into better gifts and abilities. I mean, yes, everything we're to do, we're to do unto the Lord, right? But is that what God is concerned about? Is that the main thing that God is concerned about is taking our, our money or our gifts and just making them better? I would argue no, that yes, we, we are to do whatever we can for the glory of God and to further his kingdom, but this is not the main focus and this is not what we're, we're to be prioritizing is just increasing our money or increasing our gifts. So it can't be money. It can't be gifts and abilities. Well, some people say, well, it, what about faith? And this is, this is moving closer, okay? This, this does seem to hold some water at first. But again, let's, let's go ahead and plug this into the parable and see if this fits. 
The first came before him saying, Lord, your faith has made, what, 10 times more faith? And he said to him, well done, good servant. Okay, the reason that this can't be faith, that the minas and talents can't represent faith, is because if we just look in other parts of the Bible, like, for example, when the disciples came to Jesus and they said, Lord, increase our faith. And what did he say back to them? He said, I tell you, even if you have the amount of faith as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and be cast into the sea and it would obey you. Okay, so it doesn't make sense that he would turn around here and say, oh, you need to take the faith that God has given you and multiply that into more faith. This doesn't fit either. Making more, making more money, increasing your gifts and increasing your faith is not what these are about. So what is it about them? So what do they represent? Well, like I said earlier, it's understanding of the word. And this is really the only thing that just fits in this parable that you can plug into each part of this parable and it just meshes. Let's just look at it. Again, it's not gonna be completely grammatically correct, so you gotta work with it, but you get the idea. The first came before him saying, Lord, your understanding that you've given me, the, the understanding and revelation of the word that you've given me has made 10 times more understanding, okay? Has multiplied into more understanding. Now this fits. It makes sense that he would then say, well done, good servant, because he's taken the understanding that God has given them and applied it, actually done what God has told him and what he has revealed to him and put it into action Okay, put legs to it and done it. And as a result, God has given him more understanding. This has actually given him more understanding. Now, this makes sense. This is what we're to grow in. And I'm also going to back this up with other verses in Scripture as well. But let's just look at the very end of this parable about the talents. And let's look and see this phrase that I have underlined. Okay, this is going to be very crucial. He says, so take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Okay, so remember this phrase right here, because this exact phrase or a variation of this phrase is used in other parts of the Bible. So what we can do is go to those other parts of the Bible and see in what context it was being used there. And then we can arrive at an understanding of what this means because this right here is the key to figuring out well who everyone who has what okay it says for to everyone who has well, well has what for everyone who has money will more be given or gifts and abilities more will be given or is it understanding of the word of god for for to everyone who has understanding of the word of god will more be given okay let's just look at matthew 13. It says, then the disciples came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered them, to you, it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them, it has not been given. For to the one who has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Okay, again, he's clearly talking about understanding of the word here. When Jesus spoke in parables, only certain people, only his disciples and other people were given the understanding of those parables. And the rest of the people didn't understand. They didn't have ears to hear. They didn't have eyes to see. And they didn't understand it. This was understanding that was given by God, just like the talents. If you note in the story of the talents, he gave each of them a certain measure. And then it depended upon what they did with what he gave them that determined how much of an increase they got. And this makes perfect sense when he says, for to the one who has, more will be given and he will have an abundance. Now, let's just look at Luke 12. He says a very similar thing. He says, and that servant who knew his master's will, but did not get ready or act according to his will, will receive a severe beating. But the one who did not know and did what deserved a beating will receive a light beating. And again, here's this phrase, everyone to whom much was given of him much will be required and from him to whom they entrusted much they will demand the more okay this is very very similar wording and what is he talking about he's talking about those who knew his will but not only that but also 
acted accordingly. So it's not enough to just understand the word. You then have to put legs on it. You know, it's like, like James said. He said, don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer. It's not enough to understand that you have to feed the poor. You then have to put legs on it and actually go and do it. And it's just like when Jesus, when they came to him and they said, hey, Jesus, your, your mother and your brothers are waiting for you. And what does he say to them? He says, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. They not only hear the word, but they also do it. And this is true understanding. If you have understanding, you're going to take that, however, however much God has opened your eyes to see the truth, you then have to take that and actually put that to work and put that to use and do it. You actually have to go out and feed the poor. You actually have to go out and love people and do whatever God has told you to do. Okay. Now, let's just look at Mark 4. And he said to them, pay attention to what you hear. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you, and still more will be added to you. For the one who has, here's that phrase again, for the one who has, more will be given. And from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Okay, again, this is talking about how you hear. The context is, understanding the word of God. All these are referring to understanding the word of God. So, you know, now when we go back to this, this phrase right here, this makes sense. In all the other contexts, it's talking about understanding the word of God. So at the end of this parable of the talents, that's exactly what he's talking about here, understanding of the word. Okay, and last one. No one after lighting a lamp covers it with a jar or puts it under a bed but puts it on a stand so that those who enter may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be made manifest, nor is anything secret that will not be known and come to light. Take care then how you hear. And here it is again. For the one who has more will be given, and from the one who has not, even what he thinks that he has will be taken away. Okay, these are all consistent. Let's just look at this now. This is another part of the parable that people butcher. This part says, Then another came, saying, Lord, here's your minna, which I kept laid away in a handkerchief, for I was afraid of you, because you are a severe man. Right here they'll say, See, that's why the, the lazy servant hid his talent and his minna, because he was afraid of him. He had a wrong understanding of God. He, he shouldn't have been afraid of God. He had a bad, faulty understanding of God, and it caused him to act in this disobedient way. But is this really what it's saying here? I'm going to argue no, because if we just continue reading, the master actually answers him and tells him whether or not he's wrong. And he says quite the opposite. He comes down and he says, he said to him, I will condemn you with your own words, you wicked servant. And what does he say? He says, you knew that I was a severe man. He doesn't say, you thought I was a severe man, but you were wrong in your understanding. No, he says, you knew uh, that I was a severe man, taking what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank? And at my coming, I might have collected it with interest. He clearly says that, yes, I'm a severe man. I do require a lot. And I require my servants to be productive and if they're not productive, then they're thrown into outer darkness. So his understanding wasn't faulty in that, you know, he, he had a bad understanding and he was afraid of him when he shouldn't be. No, we're, we're called to fear God. And God does require us to be productive. Now, lastly, what does the bank represent? Okay, at the end of that, he says, Why then did you not put my money in the bank? And at my coming... I might have collected it with interest. What does this mean when he says, well, why didn't you at least put it in the bank? What exactly is this referring to? Well, just think about it for a second. When you put your money in a bank, especially if it's a large sum of money and you're investing that money, you put it in the bank so that other people can take it and use it for business ventures or for whatever else and use that money and put that money to work. So you're, you're giving it to somebody else who can then start up a business or put it to use or do something with it. And then they pay you interest. That's why he says, 
and at my coming, I might have collected it with interest. So what this is saying is if we just plug in what I said that the talents and minas represent, understanding of the word, if we just plug that in here, he's saying, why then didn't you take the understanding that you were given and at least give it to somebody else, at least teach somebody else the little bit of understanding that you had been given so that they could have taken that understanding and done something with it. So, you know, I used the example of feeding the poor. Okay, if you know that as a Christian, you're to feed the poor, then why didn't you at least tell somebody else that, teach somebody else that so that they could have put that into practice and been wise and been a doer of the word and not, a, not just a hearer and actually put that to work, put that money or understanding of God's word into action and therefore there would have been some sort of interest collected. So at least there would have been something that would have been collected. And this is what he was condemned for, that he didn't even, he didn't even do that. He didn't even tell others, you know, that they needed to be listening and obeying God. And, and the little bit of light that he had received, the little bit of understanding and revelation, he failed to even share that with other people. So to sum everything up, the talents and the minas can't possibly represent physical and material things such as money, gifts, and abilities. Although, yes, we absolutely are to use these to further the kingdom and to help others. Absolutely. But in this parable, that's not what this is talking about because we are not to simply increase our money, gifts, and abilities for the sake of just having more money, gifts, and abilities. And likewise, faith, while it's a better option, it still just doesn't seem to fit the best here because faith isn't something that you can give to somebody else or put in the bank, so to speak. The only thing that it could represent is understanding of the word. This is revelation that's been given to you by God and that you've actually then taken and put into action and not been like the wicked and lazy servant who did nothing with it and was thrown into outer darkness. And why? Well, because again, God says that he is a severe man and he requires us to be productive. He requires us to take what we've been given, to understand that we've been given, and then actually apply it and do it. Or at the very least, at the very least, to put it in the bank, so to speak, to give it to others so that at least they could produce a harvest. At least they could bear fruit and do something with the revelation that you've been given. That's all I got for today. Go ahead and subscribe and like if you found this useful and God bless.